As of right now, the House Republicans debating whether it actually has the authority to vote on the health care bill today. They're trying to make some changes to it at the same time. We told you we'll be bringing you all the sausage making. This is it. It's ugly. It's politics. It is purely procedural. Let's be clear about that. Take a look at Sears. Yes, we put this stuff, the company, on death watch. Retail Ice Age indeed. Huge drop yesterday, down another 1%. That's pre-market as of today, still at $7 per share. Several of the biggest advertisers have stopped spending on YouTube over concerns that their ads would run alongside offensive videos. Eric Schmidt, the executive chair of Alphabet, was on with Maria this morning. Roll tape. It's important. You know, what we do is we match the ads and the content. But because we source the ads from everywhere, every once in a while somebody gets underneath the algorithm and they put in something that doesn't match. We've had to tighten our policies and actually increase our manual review time. And so I think we're going to be okay. Okay, so Eric Schmidt says they're trying to do something about it. Uh, and market watcher Scott uh, Martin is with us now. I don't think this hurts the stock. I don't think it affects the stock in any way, shape or form, does it? I don't believe so, Stuart, because they're going to figure it out. I mean, this is a major part of Google's business. These are major advertisers, whether it's AT&T, Johnson & Johnson. And the funny part, too, is think about the demographics of, of what they're delivering on YouTube, Stuart. About 81% of all Internet users use YouTube. So clearly the market space, marketplace is vast, and therefore Google's just going to have to figure out a smarter way to deliver these ads. And you think they will? Yeah, they have to. I mean, yeah, you know, if exactly. they don't and they lose the advertisers, they're going to be in big trouble. Okay. Uh, would you buy Google? I, I keep calling it Google. Would you buy Alphabet stock? I think it's around $860 a share right now. It's gone straight up since the election. Would you buy it? Yeah, we, we own it, Stuart. Uh, we've committed new capital to it. I still call it Google, too. It's always going to be Google to me. But I'll tell you why. The, the reason is they are the absolute dominator, heavy cash flow positive company. And they're these leaders, Stuart, that we talk about in the tech sector, that with the market so high and so pricey, you want to buy the leaders like Google, Apple, Facebook, all of those we own. Okay, a lot of people have done just that, by the way. Scott Martin, stay there. We'll bring you back when the market opens. Complicated day, but look who's here to help. <laughs> Ashley Webster, Liz McDonald, Mike Murphy, and Scott Martin. Here's my first question to all of you. What happens on the market tomorrow morning if there's a no vote on Obamacare reform? Mike Murphy first. Big sell-off in the market tomorrow, Stu. Um, big big it, one? And it, there's a lot of reasons for it. It's not just this one vote. It's the implications on what it could mean for other parts of the administration. Um, it, it's not what the market's looking for. I hope it doesn't happen. Tuesday, we dropped 1% on the Dow just with the fear that this could happen. If indeed it does happen, it brings into the play the entire uh, Trump administration's policy agenda and the ability of them to get that through Congress. I'll, I'll take the other side. I think it's a buying opportunity. We saw Brexit. We saw the Trump victory. I think that the people come in and they buy on the dip. They buy on the dip, but there will be a dip. Yes, I think there will be. Scott Martin, if there's a no vote today on the Obamacare reform deal, what happens on the market tomorrow morning? It drops, but I'm on Team Emac, Stuart. I mean, I really think that the market's getting a little bit ahead of itself with respect to talking about now maybe tax reform doesn't go through, the regulatory reform doesn't go through if we don't get health care today or tomorrow. I mean, that seems kind of crazy. Mike's right, though. There is a crisis of confidence going on in D.C., and Trump is getting a hard lesson with working with Congress and actually trying to be the dealmaker in chief that he is, but also trying to appease a lot of the House, uh, House voters right now. All right, so it could be that exactly 24 hours from now, the market, it, this could be, the market opens down and Scott Martin and Elizabeth McDonald will be buying like a banshee. I could Murphy's a buyer too. I yeah, think there's a seller, but Murphy's a buyer for sure. You'd be a buyer if there's Absolutely. a big seller. You'd be a buyer. Absolutely. You could say okay. the word banshee. It's fine. I don't know what you don't can say these days. It. Banshee. I don't even know what don't it means. Worry, I don't need <laughs> Let's get to some individual <laughs> stocks. <laughs> I'm out of my depth on this one. <laughs> How about Sears? Huge drop last session. The stock this morning has rebounded to the $8 per share level. Scott Martin, are we going to see Sears just go out of business? I mean, we did put them on Death Watch. They're on death watch. They're, they're barely walking at this point, Stuart. It's just a matter of time. I mean, I kind of feel bad 
for these retailers that are just trying to hang on and see what they can, you know, clamp onto as they kind of slowly fade away. Because let's face it, Amazon is killing them. That's the stock you want to own. We own Amazon. We have for a long time. If you're looking at retail and even technology, Amazon is the one to go with, not Sears and some of these other ones like Kohl's and Macy's. Mike Murphy, when I first came to America, Sears was everywhere. I used it all the time. Different story these days. Different yeah. story now. And I think Sears has been going under, Stuart, even before you saw the Amazon taking market share away from the retailers. I think there's been mismanagement there. Um, they didn't keep up with the time. So I think this is kind of the longest running saga in retail. But I think we all know how it ends. Got it. OK, we got the Dow Industrials down 26 points after four minutes worth of business. Earlier this year, Starbucks said it would hire refugees. Now it says it will hire veterans. Is this damage control? Absolutely. I mean, the, the initial uh, proclamation was in, in, re, in response to the uh, travel ban that uh, Mr. Trump had put in place and has since been challenged. Got a massive pushback on that, saying, OK, so you want to hire refugees? What about Americans who desperately want work? Homeless people, military uh, veterans, they could all use the work. Now we're seeing Starbucks saying, uh, yeah, OK, good idea. You know, Starbucks is a politicized company. Of course company. it is. Has been Seems for some me. time. It's politicized, and it shouldn't be, because a right. company this size that's held by so many different people, by Republicans, by mm. Democrats, the, CEO, the former CEO, I believe, shouldn't be taking such a hard stance uh, on the left, or the right, right, for that matter. It should be more middle of the I would agree entirely. When they want People great. to have a conversation it's about race ego. while you're it's lined ego. up for your coffee. I thought they'd just gone way right. overboard. It's a yeah. reason to go to McDonald's and get your coffee. <laughs> Do you have any stock in your own company? <laughs> 53 cents. <laughs> yeah. right. That's the Irish wing. Yes, it's it's uh, Dow Industrials, now we are exactly five minutes, five minutes and 14 seconds into the session, and we're down 28 points. Everybody's going to be watching for any kind of statement about the vote count for the Obamacare deal later on today. That's what will move this market. Ford Motor Company is moving. It's going to make le it says it will make less money in the first quarter than it previously thought, and the stock is now down 1%, 11 bucks a share. ConAgra, sales down. They make Chef Boyardee pasta, Oroville Redenbacher's popcorn, and a whole bunch more. OK, but they're up 1%, $40, $40 per share on ConAgra. Nike, down big yesterday after reporting weaker sales. A very modest bounce back today, up back nearly 2%, off about 5 6% yesterday. Look at the big-name technology stocks. You can never get enough of these things. All of them on the downside today. So... If we've got a little bit of a dip in the Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Alphabet, Netflix marketplace, <laughs> Mike Murphy, which of these would you buy? All of them. If you get Whoa. a dip. Now, now, look, let's go back to it. In, in just recent history, Netflix pulled down to the $86 a share level, if you remember. And, mm. and the stock, look, it's almost doubled from there. You had Apple pull down into the below $100 a share. Yeah. The problem that the general public has at home is when these stocks sell off, everyone's saying it's going to get lower. This is the end of them. This isn't the end. Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Netflix, these companies are the wave of the future. That's where you're getting growth. They're all relatively expensive. We own Facebook. If you get a dip on any of them, you want to buy them. So you think there's more room for these stocks? Those on the screen right now, there's more room for all of them to go up, even though they've had a phenomenal run already. Absolutely. If you're looking for growth, if you're looking for growth, that's where you want to look. Scott oh. Martin, will you come into that one too? I'm mm. saying that all of these companies on the screen right now have had a fantastic run. They've gone straight up for years. And do you think they've got more run room to go up some more? I, I do, Stuart. Mike's making some good points. You know, I, I think one thing that's interesting when you look at Facebook and you look at Google and Apple, you know, guys, they're kind of cheap. I mean, everybody talks about how expensive the market is and why not to buy stocks because it's at 21,000 or 20,500 uh, today. But the reality is some of these tech stocks that we're talking about here are pretty cheap versus their peers and versus their historical averages. So to me, that's where you want to be placing new money. OK, Scott, uh, by the way, I want to point out that the Dow has just turned positive very suddenly. I suspect that someone somewhere made a comment about the health care vote today that was positive. And bingo, it was down 30. Now we're up 10. Next case. Del and this may be an argument in favor of a Netflix. Millennials watch an average of six episodes per binge sitting. And three quarters of us all, millennials and everybody else, 
binge watchers these days. That's an argument for Netflix. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it's also an argument for Amazon because yeah. what are they doing? Uh, nearly 100% of them are multitasking. They're shopping online, they're browsing the web, they're texting, they're reading emails. So, you know, they're binge watching. I would say it's also an argument for chiropractors if you're sitting there for five hours. Why did you say that? I don't know. <laughs> well, well, Stuart, if I could just add, it's Go. also a positive for YouTube. The millennials are going on YouTube, so that's owned by Google. YouTube is a great growth area, but also Facebook. People are going on Facebook, spending a lot of time looking there. The way people consume content has changed, yes. and it's not going back to the old one. The way you look at a screen is totally different. 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 And what you're looking at and where it's coming from yes. is totally Absolutely different. Correct. But we're glad you're still watching cable <laughs> 1,007, no, no, oh, I made it wrong. 17,000 AT&T workers in California and Nevada. They're on strike. Uh, what's the strike about? Well, they're really mad. They haven't had a contract for about a year. They're saying, listen, you, AT&T, you've outsourced 8,000 customer service call center jobs to Mexico and the Philippines. Those are good middle class jobs that we like here in California. Uh, you know, AT&T is saying, listen, we are a union friendly company with more full time union workers than any other company. That's what they say. The, the union workers are also mad. They're saying, why should we have to install landlines and work on phone lines when you're telling us to put in the TV and Internet stuff? <laughs> Okay, not affecting the stock that much is down 11 cents. Got it. Oh. Pepsi is killing 12 packs and two liter bottles in Philadelphia because of the soda tax, which is uh, now imposed on that city. The cold, dead hand of government strikes again. Mm -hmm. I'm being very political, Murphy. Do you want yes. to jump in? Um, <laughs> well, Pepsi's had a great run. It continues to move higher, but be careful. Pepsi's not moving higher because of soda. Pepsi's oh. moving higher because of healthy snacks. Yeah, but that's the trend that's in this it. country. That's, again, back to the growth theme. That's where you're going to find but growth. Pe pe Pepsi also costs, uh, is saying that this tax cost Pepsi jobs at their distribution centers, hundreds of jobs. And that we're lost. Yeah. is the unintended consequence of what happens when you do things like this. Oh, we're going to protect people's health. You know, the government knows better. What happens is people end up losing it their jobs. just doesn't work when you try to manipulate right. what people eat and drink. Correct. I, it just does not work. I don't think it does. You know, we're out of time, at least for the opening part of the market open. <laughs> uh, Scott Martin and Mike Murphy, thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate thank you being you. with us. Check that big boy.